Well, hello there. Old Man Kelly here. Jeff to my friends, and you know you can call me Jeff. So today we're going to have a sort of history lesson for you young kids out there. I would say anybody younger than 45, 40. Because we're going to make coffee the old-fashioned way. With the percolator. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Right now I've got some other things to talk about. The grains of sand in this hourglass have been carefully measured. Ten minutes. The length of a coffee break. So, um, tomorrow I'm going to try something a bit different for me. I wrote this little five-minute comedy bit, and me and my f two friends are going to are going to perform it, and I'm going to make a short film out of it. And why it's different, I know I've done short films before, is because, well, I'm going to act in it. Now, as you might know, I feel totally comfortable in front of a camera, like I'm doing now. It doesn't bother me. But acting's a different thing. Um, I'm not usually an actor. Um, I like uh, I like being behind the camera. I like to write. I like to edit. I like to direct. But acting, I don't know. I'm I'm going to depend on my two other folks to help me with my acting ability, and I hope they can be honest with me because I don't want to come off like an idiot. I and mean, look, I don't have a face for being in front of the camera, so this is going to be weird. It all started because, well. I do one short film a year. Well, one I write and direct and edit, and another one a friend of mine writes, and we both direct it and I edit. But beside, and those are done about the same time every year. But besides that, I don't do a lot. Even my work video output is 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 not been what it used to be. So uh, I got a little desperate. I'm like, uh, I, I want to do some video work. So I'm like, I'm going to write something that that with a few people I can depend on to be there. And I thought, Terry, Willie, and myself, I can depend on us three. So I wrote a little short, a little comedy bit that I thought was funny. In fact, uh, the other day, me and my wife were in the car. It's just six pages long, so I gave it to her. I said, why don't you read it while I'm driving? And I heard her laughing a few times, so I'm hoping it works out. Not only will I be depending on Terry and Willie to let me know if I'm acting stupid, but I'm also hoping that they come up with some more ideas that may be funny. And it'll be right here on this channel eventually once it's complete, so you'll be able to see it. Anyway, now that I talked about that, why don't we go to old school coffee? We're not a big operation, Joe. 400 people on the payroll. Even so, I'd bet my bottom buck the coffee break is costing us at least $30,000 a year. What? That's right, $30,000. All that has to happen, and it does happen, is for half of our people to take an extra 10 minutes. When I was a kid, these are what coffee was made in, a percolator. We didn't even have automatic drip coffee makers or anything like that. This is what we used. Um, I probably was about 10 before Mr. Coffee's got popular. And Mr. Coffee, as far as I know, at least in my life was the first popular automatic drip coffee maker and percolators sort of died out. Now why do I have this? It's because I go camping and I like to make coffee the old-fashioned way when I'm camping. You know, I, I, I have a little burner, propane burner, I put this on. Um, I've tried doing it over the campfire before but it's so hard to regulate heat. I'm not that old school. So I, I bought, you can buy these at, I bought this at Bass, Bass Pro Shop probably 10 years ago. Um, I just went online, you can still find them on there. Uh, they're about 30 bucks, 25, 30, depending on what size you want. Then I'm going to show you right now how this thing works. Time for coffee! Now one thing of course you need is coffee grounds, which I've just ground myself here. And I was thinking as I was doing this, I'm like, well, I'm not really old school. Not my old school, because when I was a, a kid, no one ground their own coffee beans. You bought them already pre-ground. It was usually Folgers or Hills Brothers, something like that. But then I thought, grinding my own beans, it's almost more old school, right? I mean, I'm sure John Wayne didn't have pre-ground coffee beans when he was out in the prairie, right? Or maybe he did, I don't know the history of uh, grinding coffee beans. So we have our pot here, and if you look inside the pot, 
we have this contraption. Now your coffee beans goes, your coffee beans go in this, and then this goes on here, and this goes on here. And what'll happen is once the water starts to boil in the pot, it'll force the water up into this hole, out this, you'll see it in this little clear, oh, sorry. You'll see it in this little clear thing here, bubbling. It'll run back through the coffee ground, grounds, drip down back into the pot, and it'll keep cycling and cy recycling. And once you see this little thing stop, bloop, 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 you know your coffee is done, right? So, let's do this thing. So we take our coffee beans, we put them in here. No paper filters or anything like that. Probably should put it on here, otherwise it can fall back into that hole. Right. I might have ground too much here. No filters, no nothing like that. Put our top on. The only thing that worries me about this, I've had it for a few years and this little base part down here is starting to get weak. So I gotta be careful. I'm not sure if we can buy, if I can buy just the aluminum part new. I'm not so sure. Okay, this will go in here, but first we gotta put some water in here. Now I read somewhere that you should always use cold water to start. I have no idea why that is, but that's what I'm doing. Enough. And then we put this in. And we put this top on. And then over to the stove. Now here's the thing, you gotta wait for this to boil and it might take a while. So I'm gonna sort of cut away for a minute and when it starts to boil, we'll be back. So while we were waiting, I thought I'd talk a little bit about um, some of the disadvantages over using a percolator like I'm doing now, rather than one of these new Craig systems or even the Mr. Coffee drip coffee makers or whatever you use. The first one is obviously the time. I mean, we're gonna have to wait for the water to boil and that's gonna take a while. And then once it starts boiling, it has to circulate enough to get all that flavor into the coffee. Um, that's a big drawback. The second drawback is it's gonna be very hot, boiling hot. You know that woman who got burned at McDonald's and sued for a lot of money? Hotter than that, so you gotta be careful. And by the way, just a quick note here, if you've never watched the documentary about the lady who got burned by McDonald's with the hot coffee, then stop making jokes about it. It seems to me whenever somebody wants to bring up frivolous lawsuits, they bring up that lady. The lady had a point, and it's not as cut and dry as you might think. Watch the documentary, or just read something online. It's, it's a lot more involved than you may know. Anyway, I'm gonna check on the coffee, see how it's going, all right? And that's how it begins. It's starting to percolate. It's starting to make coffee. Well, looking at the color of the coffee and the little clear thing, it's looking to me like it might be done. So I'm going to turn off the heat and let's give this a try. One thing to be cautious of, it gets hot. Use an oven mitt or something. Alright, so here we are back. I'm going to try this out. Now I'm doing this just as a bit of a history lesson for you young kids out there. Normally, I only use this camping, so um, next time I go camping, maybe I'll make a video of me doing it in the great outdoors. Let's find out just how this coffee looks. You can see it's hot. And it's actually got a very nice color to it. 
Mmm, smells good. And it's funny, there is definitely a difference in smell and taste from making coffee this way to a, a regular way you'd make it in a house. And when I smell the coffee, it brings me right back to a camping trip. I feel like I should be outside on a picnic table, hearing the birds, the quiet morning, because I get up very early. Now the one thing, everybody has their one quirk, I like a little sugar in my coffee. Okay, I'm not quite John Wayne when it comes to that. Because I always imagine John Wayne out in the prairie just, no matter how long he's been sitting on the campfire, just pouring some in a cup and just whooping it down. But not a lot of sugar. Half a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon if I really want it sweet. Bugging up the glasses. Well, it seemed to taste good, but it's way too hot. And that's, like I said, the drawback. Um, it took about 15 minutes to, to make a pot of coffee, but it takes me about three minutes on my automatic drip. And now I'm gonna wait for it to cool down a bit. Definitely, there's definitely a different taste between this and an automatic drip coffee maker. Is it better? I'm not gonna go that far. Some people might say yes, some people might say no. I would just say different, really different. Anyway, I wouldn't advise this for normal home use, though not only does it bring me back to camping, it brings me back to my childhood. I remember being at my grandparents' farm, walking in the house, because the kids would stay in this little side house. You'd walk in and you'd just smell that coffee that filled the whole house. And all the adults would just grab it, fill a cup and start drinking. No Starbucks crap at all back then. But people go to Starbucks, like spending $8 for a cup of coffee. Anyway, this is uh, Old Man Kelly. Thanks for watching. I'll be back sometime with another vlog. Maybe we'll start trying different coffees. How does that sound? Take care. Need to go camping.